So yeah, question seven is a pretty good one, right? They give you the resonance structure and then ask you for the formal charges on each of the atoms um, within that structure. And so formal charge, right? To remember calculating formal charge is our group number minus assigned electrons. All right, so carbon, carbon is group four, nitrogen is group five, oxygen is group six. When we're trying to figure out our assigned electrons, right, for assigned electrons, we count one electron for each covalent bond, and we count all non-bonding electrons. So for this first carbon here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one electron there. So I've got seven electrons assigned to that carbon. Um, nitrogen is four single bonds. So I'm going to have one, right, two, three, four electrons there, right? Because I count one electron for each covalent bond. And then oxygen, oxygen is group six. I don't know why I wrote a zero there. Oxygen is group six. And then if I count oxygen, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five electrons assigned to that. So go down through and subtract those. I get um, a minus three charge on the carbon. Uh, I get a plus one on the nitrogen and a plus one on the oxygen for those formal charges. So minus three would be on carbon plus one on nitrogen and the plus one would be on carbon as well for question seven let me know if you've got any questions on that okay question 13 is that a question or Uh, question 13, um, one, two, okay, we're asked for electron domain geometry for all of these. So question 13, right, our electron domain geometry, we have to count bonding, non-bonding domains, basically. Um, so if I look at the first oxygen, I've got one and then two domains on that first oxygen. So we would have a planar electron domain geometry carbon carbon number two there also has two electron domains so that's going to be planar as well carbon three has got one two three four electron domains when i have four electron domains um, we are tetrahedral oxygen four here has got one two, three electron domains, three electron domains. We are going to be trigonal planar. And carbon five also has three domains, right? One, two, and that triple bond, the double bond is the second domain of that carbon. Three domains for carbon number five, that makes that trigonal planar as well. And then oxygen six, uh, one, two, one, two, three, and four domains. So four electron domains that would make this tetrahedral. All right, just be careful because it was asking um, electron domain geometry. In some of these cases, they would be the same, like for oxygen one, carbon two, um, carbon five, carbon three, right? their electron domain geometry is the same as the molecular geometry, right? Carbon three would be tetrahedral for both. Carbon five would be tetrahedral for both. Um, oxygen six though, it's got four domains, two are bonding, two are non-bonding, right? So that would make its molecular geometry bent. So just be careful what the question is asking for. Is it asking for 
my electron domain geometry or is it asking for my molecular geometry? For question 13. Correct, bent is a molecular geometry where we just look at the covalent bonds in that structure. Uh, professor, question. So yeah. for the exam, I know you're gonna give us a chart, breakdown of it on that chart. We'll have what the uh, what they're labeled as, like tetrahedral and all that, or we sh should we know that? Um. I guess I didn't put it in there. You're gonna have the chart that we had in class. So it's gonna tell you like, it would say tetrahedral, it would show you tetrahedral and then it would show you, you know, tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, um, and then the bent geometry within that. So it's gonna show you like all three options within the tetrahedral electron domain geometry. And it, it will not have the bond angles on it. So you do have to know the bond angles, yeah. Okay. Um, question 16 is asking us which one will have bond angles of 120 degrees. All right. So to do that, we've got to draw the Lewis structure for all of these. Yeah, Gabby. So it'll say, you know, two domains. I'll see if I can find a, a version of it here. Um, and I'll pull it up on the, after I'm done with this recording, I'll find a version of it and I'll pull it up and show everybody what it's going to look like. Um, but it's the one that I gave you in class. So for question 16, right, um, draw the Lewis structure for all of these hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, the chlorine trifluoride, that's the bent, right? That's going to fall into this bent geometry. The nitrogen trichloride is going to be the same as uh, it's a chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. And then last but not least, my boron trichloride. My boron trichloride is the only one that'll have bond angles that are 120 degrees. Um, right, my up here, we're in the tetrahedral electron domain geometry and the same with nitrogen trichloride, we're tetrahedral electron domain geometry with the lone pair. So we're gonna be like 107.5 degrees here. With the chlorine trifluoride, we only have one equatorial position. So here, my bond angles are gonna be 90 degrees. And um, here, my bond angles are gonna be about 120 degrees for the boron trichloride. So the only one that would work is that boron trichloride, right? We can't, Rochelle, we can't make um, double bonds because our halogens, unless they are in the center of the Lewis structure, our halogens only ever want to make one bond because our halogens have seven electrons. So to form, to have eight in their outer shell, they just need to share one more electron. Correct, right? So Rochelle, uh, boron and hydrogen are the two exceptions we're going to see that doesn't fill its octet, right? Hydrogen will only ever have at most two electrons in its outer shell, and boron will only have six electrons at most in its outer shell. It's fine, because if I were to fill the octet of boron, it would create a charge. It would put charge on boron, um, and boron, right, whenever possible, we want to minimize our charges. So boron and hydrogen are gonna be the two that we'll see that'll have less than eight electrons. Um, so if the halogen is in the center, it can make more than 
right? In the chlorine trifluoride, we've got a halogen in the center and chlorine is forming three bonds. So I was, I was saying that the only case where a hal the only case where we will see a halogen forming more than one bond is if it's in the center of a Lewis structure, right? We saw that with the chlorine trifluoride. Um, there's a few other examples where like iodine or boron might be in the center. We're not gonna see fluoride in the center of any Lewis structures. Yeah, Rochelle. Um, what I meant is like, why can't we have the chlorine have double bonds so that it doesn't have the lone pairs? Yeah, and I, I would still give you the same answer because for chlorine to form double bonds, it would be forming it with fluorine and, and fluorine, right? Our, fluorine is also a halogen that does not want to form more than a single bond, right? So if we did that, and sure, like let's let's draw that structure, right? Um, so I'm not sure, you know, where the electrons. Well, the electrons would have to come from fluorine. They couldn't come from chlorine. Um, so two two possibilities based on your your question, right? That's one possibility. The other possibility. Let's say you push in those electrons um, from chlorine. All right, just give me a second here to get these. So if, let's say you take two of those electrons from chlorine and push those into form a double bond, right? There's two things wrong or the same thing is wrong with, with, with base. Well, different things are wrong with each of these structures. This first structure up top here, we violated the octet rule for fluorine. So it doesn't, right? We, we can't take two of those electrons from chlorine to form a double bond because that breaks the octet rule for fluorine. We don't wanna do that. If I take a look at this structure down here, I also don't wanna do this because uh, fluorine is group seven and okay, fluorine is group seven. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons assigned to it. That's gonna put a positive charge on fluorine. And if we're carrying a charge, right, we wanna have our positive charge on the least electronegative element. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. Um, so we don't want to have a positive charge there. So that's that's the other issue. Like if, if you want to work through that and form those double bonds, okay, did I break the octet rule for an element? Um, did I create charge, right? We, those are two things we don't want to do. We don't want to break the octet rule. We don't want to create a charge. And then, yeah, Jack, because fluorine is the most electronegative, we're not going to see fluorine um, in the center. All right, let me just keep going here with question 19 so I can pause the video and I'll answer some of these questions that have come in. I guess question 18 is next. All right, want to know the hybridization of each of these, All right? So carbon one is got three electron domains, one, two, three, All right? Three electron domains. I need three hybrid orbitals. So we are sp2 hybrid, right? I'm gonna to mix together s plus p and p, and that's gonna make sp2 hybrid. Um, carbon two, right? Carbon two also has one, two, three domains. So it's also sp2 hybrid. Oxygen three has one, two, and three domains that makes this one sp2 hybrid so far not too bad here uh, nitrogen four nitrogen four has one two three four domains four domains i need four hybrid orbitals s plus p plus p it's p blend those together and we are sp3 hybridized and then nitrogen five we're back to the three domains one two and three, three domains, we need three hybrid orbitals. So we're gonna be sp2 hybridized. So any questions on 18? And then Arthur, I'll come back to your question in a second here. All 
right, I'll do question 19, then I'll answer Arthur's question here. Um, so Natalie, no, we're never gonna see, because we only have one S orbital, right? We can only blend in our valence electrons. So we're only gonna ever have an S orbital to blend in. So it'll be SP, SP2, SP3, um, SP3D, SP3D2. So it'll never be more than S. It'll never be more than P3 because we don't have any more than three P orbitals to blend in. Um, now they're asking for our electron domain geometry, right? Again, just be careful. Um, it's asking for our electron domain geometry, not our molecular geometry. So carbon one, three electron domains, right? We're trigonal planar. They're all bonding domains. So it'd be trigonal planar for both. Um, carbon two three domains, so we're trigonal planar again. Oxygen three, hmm. yeah, I mean, electron domain geometry, it's trigonal planar because it's sp2 hybridized. Uh, nitrogen four, again, it's asking for electron domain geometry. So we've got four electron domains. We're gonna be tetrahedral. And then nitrogen five, we're back to that trigonal planar geometry because we've got those three electron domains. Now, no, Gabby, the chart's just gonna have the geometries and then the sub families within each of the geometries. It won't have the hybridization, right? But it's basically, if it's planar, it's SP. If it's trigonal planar, it's SP2, tetrahedral, SP3. If it's trigonal bipyramidal, it's SP3D. And then if it's octahedral, right, it's going to be SP3D2.